Welcome to Hood Champion Boxing and Sports. Let me tell you, man. Outstanding news, outstanding news. This is where you know God doesn't make mistakes. And the powers that be, and I'm talking about guys who, uh, who, who affect decisions uh, over in Australia and the boxing world and everything else. They came together to make this happen. And this, this is where you see people getting it right. Those key decision makers getting it right because they could have, they, they, nobody had to jump to help uh, Bill Haney out and Devin Haney. And a lot of people were just saying all kind of horrible things and you just sit back and allow nature to take its course and you see what happens, man. And, and this right here is a good learning opportunity because 20 some years ago, this man made mistakes and he learned from those mistakes and for the next 20 years, he started doing nothing but good. Nothing but good. When people he came in contact with, with his son, building relationships, he's done nothing but good. So now, after 20-something years of doing all that good, probably the most important event of his life, aside from the birth of his son, he hit a roadblock. And with all that good that he did, that's what he did. He planted nothing but good. You see what happened. It came back to him full circle. And this just shows you, man, just to be mindful of how you treat people, be mindful of the relationships that you, you or the, the bridges that you're burning, and be mindful of those relationships and rapports that you're tearing down. Bill made sure to build healthy relationships, healthy rapports, treat people good, and people came full circle to help him out. Uh, I don't care what spin anyone tries to put on it, this is great. This is great. Um, and he actually went on to talk about, because in mid-May, you know, Devin didn't attend a press conference. And to dispel a lot of rumors that's going on, uh, uh, Bill went on to say that Devin didn't miss the press conference due to anything on his account. He said that his dad wasn't able to board the flight. They said his visa hadn't been approved, it had been denied. But at that point in time, he wasn't allowed to go through customs. And then he just went on to say that um, he made some mistakes and now he's, hope he's hoping that, you know, his son and other people just don't make those mistakes because it just ultimately wasn't wasn't worth it it was a uh, you know the drug defense from 30 years ago you know back from 1992 man and he says any conviction you've had where you served a year or more stops you from getting into the country and australia so again australia with antiquated uh uh, uh rules when it comes to uh people with felony convictions they need to they need to keep the country safe and i agree with that but uh, you know sometimes maybe it's time to time to kind of revisit that and and, um, you know, see about making some tweaks. But it's all about keeping the country safe. But he's in country. And to be honest with you, this isn't good for Cambosos. This is that you ever been um, you ever been running and get tired? And then you look up and you see the finish line. Like, a, have you ever run a marathon? I've ran marathons. And... You get like halfway, man, and you know, I remember when I used to run them, we used to get a halfway. Uh, actually, not even halfway. They have like four different points in like a 16-mile uh, marathon, man. And they would, at like every four miles, somebody would give you like half a banana, and they had to spray. They would spray your shins with it. And um, and then another four, another four. And, man, there were times in that marathon, man, <laughs> you're just tired. And then you see the finish line, you get that second um second win and i think what just happened here with devin haney and uh his team they got a second win before the fight and this right here i think gonna carry him in the fight with a uh and i, I don't know i don't know I don't, i'm not gonna say he's gonna win the fight but i'm just telling you i think that cambosis is at the disadvantage and it makes you wonder you know and i'm gonna take from personal experience I, I talked about this in the video my brothers and I, right, four of us, were in the airport in Miami, about to go uh, to a funeral. We're going to another country. And uh, my, my youngest brother, he didn't have a, a damn passport. He thought he was going to get in there just on his ID card. And, you know, we all looked at him like, man, what the hell's wrong with you? So they weren't going to let him get on the flight. Fortunately, we were there like four hours before the flight took off. So made a few phone calls. To my, um, my uncle, explain the situation. He said, don't worry. He said, "Put uh, give me get a phone to the, 
the fl- uh, the, the person at the clerk at the desk, or, or the uh, whatever the hell, the hell they call that person at, at the ticket counter. He said, "Give me your fax number, give me your phone number, get the phone back to me." He was like, "All right, you guys stay there." He called my aunt, who happened to work in this uh, prime minister's cabinet. I didn't really understand her position, right? I didn't understand. I didn't understand any of that at the time, but I knew that she was an important person. But she was just auntie to us, you know. And then all of a sudden, within 30 minutes, you know, the, the people come over there, making sure we're okay, treating us like celebrities, and time to board. The, and then we found out my son, my brother, could board the flight. So we're all looking like, what the hell? We got on the flight. We're sitting up in the front, get first class or whatever, and we land. We come off the plane. People are waiting for us. We uh, they run our bags through customs, but we didn't even we we didn't even have to go through customs. We we walked through there, but nobody checked us on. They didn't mess with our bags or nothing. And we went out. There was another team waiting for us there, carried us out to the front where my family was waiting. And um, I remember I was like, "Damn, what the hell just happened?" Then my aunt explained. Uh, a little bit more to us and we all laughed about it but I was like okay she's a big shot but what I'm saying is it it just takes you to know the right person to to get somebody into the country and Bob Arum this is one of the I don't know who who was behind getting him into the country but I must suspect Bob Arum had something to do with it Bob Arum has been around for been around for a long time Bob Arum knows a lot of people. And there's so much attention on this fight in addition to Bob Arum's connections where the Australian government, in my opinion, had to look at this and make an exception. And this could be a blessing in disguise. Could This whole situation could be a blessing in disguise because had they not been in a position to, to, to be associated with top rank and to be coming over to Australia for this fight. They could have been in a position to go somewhere else for a fight and not had a connection with Bob Arum, who knows people. Bob Arum used to be a lawyer. But so many years of him being involved in boxing and, and, and making relationships, I'm not sure Eddie Hearn could have pulled that off for him. Now, I don't know if Bob did, but I know, I believe that Bob said he was working on it. Bob's too old for the bullshit. You know what I'm saying? And you can see it in his interviews now. Like he just doesn't have time for crap. But this is, they should be very thankful. You know, of course, you, these happen for a reason. They believe in, a, you know, there's more to them what we see on this earth. But also, Bob Arum, still being around, being alive, being able to, to ha- have influence over uh, this decision, or at least putting it on the table and, trying to get people to make sense of it and just to, to bring it all full circle to get building the country. I think that's amazing. Absolutely amazing. But I like hearing that, that man and just for him to be granted the last minute visa, I know how fast it can go. Hours took 30 minutes. 30 minutes for that to, to process. We were there four minutes before the flight left and it happened that quick. It was just a letter, from a certain person sent across to leadership in that airport and things started happening. Well, it may have went to the, uh, I just know it ended up in the airport. But I know they had uh, an embassy down there in Miami. So it may have went from, the, from that country to that embassy right there in Miami and then shot it over to the airport. That's how I think it worked. Crazy. But anyway, he's in country. You got to give Devin the advantage, man. Still think it's going to be a tough fight, but he's going to go in there with a second, a He's gonna go in there with a lot of energy. This is what this is makes the fight even that more interesting. But I'm gonna leave it at that, man. Just want to give you guys the update. So Devin's father granted last minute visa to Australia for the George Cambosos fight. Absolutely outstanding. You guys take care. Shout out to all the veterans. Appreciate the support. Like and subscribe. I'm in the Britney.